In this video, I'm going to talk about what is project scheduling. I'm going to define the term. I'm going to look at what the core components of scheduling are, and I'm hopefully going to leave you with a much better understanding of specifically what project scheduling actually is. Okay, let's start off with the boring definition from the PMBOK, the project management body of knowledge. So project scheduling as defined in the PMBOK is the process of defining, organizing, and managing the tasks, activities, and timelines required to complete the project within a specified time period. Now, the way I like to think about project scheduling in simpler terms is we have a project, we have all this work that needs to get done. How do we ensure it gets done on time. So how do we make sure all the work is done within the required time frame for the project? What are the tools, processes we're going to use to make sure that all the work is done within the time period? So there's two principal ways we do this, which is the two core components of project scheduling. We need to create a plan. So we need to create a plan of how we're going to deliver all the project work, what sequence we're doing, going to do the task, what order they need to be done in, how long they're going to take, what methodology we're going to use. Then after we've created a plan, the next part is we need to follow it. So we need to implement the schedule. We need to follow the plan and we need to monitor and control performance to check the work we're doing matches what we said we're going to do. And if there's variances from the plan, we address it. We do something about it. So there's two core components of project scheduling. There's scheduling development, building a plan, then there's scheduling control which is implementing and focusing on actually doing what we said we were going to do. So scheduling is the tools and processes to ensure we finish the project on time. But what actually is a schedule? Well, a schedule is a plan of how to deliver the project. Schedules can take many different forms of the most common form that you're used to that most people would say would be a Gantt chart. A Gantt chart is where we list out all of the activities required to complete the project. For each activity, there's a start date, a date we're planning to start the activity, a finish date, a date we're planning to finish the activity, and a sequence. We represent this using a Gantt chart as bars on a chart. You can see the start and finish date of each activity and the linkages between the activities. So when we talk about the schedule, we're talking about some model or some visual representation of how we're proposing to deliver the project. It'll show all the activities, the duration of the activities, the sequence they need to be completed in. Using this information, we can calculate the planned start and finish dates, and it gives us an overall duration for the project when key milestones are going to occur and what date all of the different tasks that are required to be performed will be performed. Now that we understand that scheduling and project schedule management is the tools and processes we use to ensure the project finishes on time, and that a schedule is the visual representation of all the information, all the different tasks we have to complete. I want to now talk about some core concepts that are fundamental to project schedule. First one is the work breakdown structure. So the work breakdown structure is a hierarchical decomposition of the project scope and it's the foundation of the schedule. It's where we take the entire project scope and break it down into component pieces called work packages, which we turn into activities. So when we're creating a work breakdown structure, you can picture it as we have an entire complicated project scope and we're breaking it down into a series of activities. These activities are the work that needs to be done to complete the project. In addition to activities, which are tasks we need to complete, we also have milestones. So a milestone is a significant event or point in time in the project timeline against which we measure progress. So milestones are simplified high level key milestones that we complete that show progress along the projects. For example, on a construction project, we might start with the foundations and earthworks and there'll be a milestone for the completion of all these acts. Okay, so we understand that a project can be broken down into a series of activities that we need to complete to complete the work. Activities then have certain attributes we need to understand. So for each activity that we need to complete to complete the project, there'll be a dependency. So these activities will have relationships between them. These are referred to activities dependencies. To start, 
the concrete foundations, we need the earthworks to be complete. So the earthworks activity and the concrete foundation, these two activities have a relationship between them. The concrete foundations are dependent on the earthworks being complete. These activities and their dependencies form a sequence. So a sequence is the relationship between activities that represent the sequence that we need to complete the activities to complete the project. In addition to having the sequences and dependencies, activities also have durations. Each task has a certain number of time that it takes to complete. Once we've worked out all the activities we need to complete to complete the project, we understand the order that they need to be completed in, and we know the duration of each activity. We can combine this together to create our Gantt chart or our schedule model. So if you imagine the input information to a schedule model is going to be the list of tasks we need to complete to complete the project, the duration of these tasks and the sequence they need to be completed in. We combine this information together, we get our schedule model. Intrinsic to this understanding of activities, sequences and durations are two additional concepts that are important to understand when talking about scheduling. The first one is the critical path and the critical path method. The critical path is the sequence of activities that if delayed, delay project completion. So these are the activities that for whatever reason, the activity gets delayed, then it's going to extend the overall duration of the project. If you imagine we're starting a new construction project and the client pushes back the access to site date, that date, every day they delay that date is likely going to delay project completion. The other concept around scheduling, which is intrinsic to every schedule, are resources. So the amount of resources we allocate to a task is going to impact the duration as well. So we also have to understand when we're building a schedule, activities have a set duration, but they have a set duration depending on the amount of resources we've allocated to a task. So if we're using more resources, in theory, the activity will be completed faster. However, that's not always the case. So we also need to understand the resources allocated to the task. Okay, the simplified takeaways. Project schedule management is about delivering project on time, it's broken down into two core concepts, development, which is creating the schedule, and control, which is implementing and ensuring we follow the schedule. The schedule is the ordered list of project tasks with durations and dates. That's what project scheduling is at its most fundamental. It's all about finishing the project on time. And we do this using the project schedule management process with the goal of creating a schedule and then following this schedule.